Hi guys, this is Bob N9KR in Southern Indiana. I thought today we uh, we take a look at a repair job on the Drake AC3 power supply. Uh, these guys are almost identical in functionality, a slightly different design to the AC4 power supply, and they'll work with all the Drake uh, four-line uh, transmitters, the T4X, T4XB, and also the, uh, the TR3 and the TR4 uh, transceivers as well. Uh, most common thing that uh, usually goes wrong with these, and that is indeed the case with this one, is the uh, electrolytic capacitors go bad. Um, there's uh, five of them on here, a total of seven, uh, a couple of them have dual, dual caps in them, and a total of seven electrolytics involved here, and they almost, after 50 years, these things are almost guaranteed to be bad. As a matter of fact, we tried this out in a test setup. We'll take a look at it here just a second. Probably should have known better, but I went ahead and tried that AC3 power supply out in one of our uh, positions that have, we have the Drake uh, four line set up and actually two positions here in the shack. Uh, this one is, uh, it's got the AC4 in it and that's working just fine. We went ahead and, and uh, set it up with the uh, T4X transmitter in the second position here and uh, listened to my uh, CW signal uh, on the air in another receiver and it was indeed horrible. Uh, all kinds of hash and noise and just a terrible sounding signal. So we quickly uh, took that off the air and uh, Put it up on the bench here, so that's that's what we're that's what we're working with, and is actually we have another one that we probably need to get in and do the same thing with. So the transformer on this guy's a real brute. Uh, it's got the four secondaries on it, four secondary windings: uh, one for the high voltage, one for the low voltage supply, one for uh, the uh, bias supply, and uh, one for the uh, filament uh, supply voltage. And uh, again, we're almost identical to the. Uh, to the setup on the uh, AC4. Again, here's our uh, five electrolytic capacitors, these cans, and they are actually, there's a couple of them that are double, so we have a total of uh, seven electrolytics that we have to probably replace, along with possibly some of the uh, some of the bypass resistors, and maybe even the diodes. So the things we typically want to take a look at. Also, the standard word of warning, you want to make sure that uh, you always use extra care working with these power supplies because the voltages are potentially lethal. First thing, of course, is you want to make sure that the unit is unplugged. This one indeed is, and probably want to have given it a few minutes since, since it was on to make sure that the uh, caps all get discharged. As you can see, I've removed the bottom cover from this guy. We've actually already done some, um, some replacement. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, high voltage uh, capacitors uh, replaced so far on this guy. There's, uh, there's two of them in there. They're 125 microfarads each for, at 400 volts. And uh, we actually replaced those, there's one here and the second one here, with some modern, uh, some modern caps there. Uh, working voltages are the same or better, and the, uh, the capacitance values are the same, and, uh, but they're much physically much smaller, modern capacitors. Compare those with some of the old style here. Here's one of the old, old style capacitors like, like are installed on this guy. So we also replaced in the high voltage section here, the supply, we replaced the two uh, bypass resistors here. The old ones had changed value and gone significantly higher. These are 150K each. Um, then on the low voltage supply, we replaced the two electrolytic capacitors here. And uh, we went ahead and uh, replaced this third one. This is, uh, this is a 350 at, uh, no, that's incorrect, it's an 80 microfarad at 350 volts. And then these two guys ahead of it up here, also in the low voltage section, are both 100 microfarads at 150 volts. We decided that the uh, all the diodes there's uh, there's diodes associated with uh, all four section all three sections here. The high voltage diodes is four of them here, and there's uh, there's two of them here and here in the low voltage section, and there's one of them over here in the bias supply. Those are all uh, one in uh, one in 3194s. They're uh, I'm quite sure they're Drake uh, original. The diodes and they're all good and I didn't make an attempt to change those. It would have been relatively easy but they seem to be working fine. None of them are bad or shorted. So we stuck with those as well. So the bias supply is the only one that we haven't replaced the caps yet and they're going to be uh, these two guys here uh, when we get them in there. Uh, I'm using these are 47 microfarads at uh, 250 volts. Physically they're the smallest ones we have to have to work with. They actually replace a, a couple of 20 microfarad caps at 150 volts so they ought to do just fine. So that, I think once we get these last two installed in the uh, low voltage supply, we'll, uh, we'll fire this guy up and, and check out the voltages and see where we're at. Here's some representative samples of some of the capacitors that 
that we used in the unit here. These are available at most supply houses, relatively uh, uh, inexpensive, and these are much better and physically much smaller than than their old counterparts. So that's what we're that's what we're using. Just a quick look at the schematic for the AC3 power supply. We've already replaced in this unit uh, these two capacitors here in the high voltage section and these two bypass resistors here. They're 150k each with modern components. In the, in the low voltage power supply here we've also replaced these two 100 microfarad capacitors and this uh, 80 microfarad cap over here. We kept the same uh, bypass resistor here. It was still within tolerance. And what we're getting ready to do is replace these last two 20 microfarad capacitors here in the in the uh, in the bias supply. Uh, the diode is okay, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and complete that task, and then we'll uh, fire this guy up on the bench and check the voltages and see if everything is within tolerance. We should have about 700 volts here on the high voltage section, about 300 in the low voltage supply, and about variable minus 40 to about minus 75 or so in the bias supply. There's a little variable pot in there that's a 10k pot. We'll check that as well, but I think it's okay. Okay, so we got our replacement capacitors in place for that uh, that bias supply. And uh, they're located actually up, up here. And uh, everything else looks like it's okay. So uh, the only components we replaced in the entire unit were all the filter capacitors and uh, two of the uh, of the bleeder resistors. Everything else seems to be fine. So we're going to go ahead and fire this up in just a second. Here's a, take, here's a look at the, uh, at the Synth Jones connector. And uh, see we've got a jumper in there on pins 1 and 2. That's so that uh, this unit will turn on when we apply AC power. Uh, typically that's handled on the T4X itself. But uh, we're going to out on the bench here now. So we've got, we've got that unit. Power ready to apply, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, fire that up in just a second, and we'll take some voltage measurements. Okay, so we got our unit fired up. There's no smoke or any issues, any obvious issues, which I didn't really expect. So let's see. Let's take some measurements and see what we got. Again, a word of caution. High voltage is present. Use very, very extreme caution when you're working inside this unit, even taking voltage measurements. So up here is our, uh, let's take a look at our bias supply that we just finished. We're showing a minus 54 volts and that looks like it's just about the resistor is about in the center of its range, the variable pot, so that's pretty good. We're, we should be able to go from around minus 50 or up to about uh, 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 minus uh, 70 or 80, 80 volts DC. That's, that's looking pretty good. Let's check the uh, high voltage output here. High voltage is 700 and uh, 705 volts under no load. That looks just about right. Let's check the low voltage output. 288 volts DC. That's just about exactly right. And uh, we'll go ahead and check the check the AC as well. The filaments of apply. And we'll make sure that we're right around 13 volts, which is what we should be. Yep, 13.75 volts AC on the filament supply. So everything looks like it's working exactly right. And uh, I think uh, I think we consider this a successful repair job. We'll get this back back uh, in our Drake uh, Drake line setup and test it out and make sure we have a, a good functioning system.